Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Falcon. In this one I have for you a 3 vs 3 on the new map Hawaba and I'm going to be playing with Spiverband Kessel with the balanced deployment type on the Axis side. So new map, new division, this is premium still division content so make sure to go get yourself a beverage and a snack of choice and settle in because this was one hell of a game and I'll be going through pretty much everything that Spiverband Kessel has to offer. Uh, so let's have a quick look at what's heading off from the start. We've got a Stug here, we've got a Marda 2, a couple of Marda 2s. I've got two of the Brandenburger MG42s. Brandenburger MG42s are really nice because they have the Raider trait so they get extra stealth. Then you have the Flagfilling here with Brandenburger heading up with the Brandenburger Aufklader. A CK, Chendur, and the Stug and Panzer IV on this side. Now this was the first time that I'd played this map on the live patch. So still getting familiar with it. Unfortunately, losing a transport there early on because of an AT unit that had already unloaded on this road. And it's going to be starting to shoot at the Stug 3 as well. We've also got sniper fire coming in onto my Brandenburger from the Kalalashe, so that's not ideal. But the Brandenburger here pushing through. Very strong squad, both at long range and close range. They're good at close range because they have high veterancy and they have the HE grenade, of course. But that, in combination with the high veterancy, is really strong. And then they also have access to the MG42s, which makes them great at long range. So we get off the HE here early. We take out one of the Kalalashe Moto already. The CK is actually helping pin down one of the Kalarashi Moto further back. And meanwhile, trying to push up with the Stug and Panzer IV. Now, my Brandenburger Aufklader here. I've just about got line of sight on the edge, but I move them up just to make sure that I can see what's going on in case there's any AT guns in the heavy cover. You're going to need the Brandenburger Aufklader close, but I'm going to immediately come under fire from the Kalarashi, so I need to get them back into cover ASAP. Also, the Lunatist there with their sniper, don't want to be running into them. But, as you can see, the Brandenburger really doing a number on this infantry. Now that I've made them fall back from cover here, Kalashimoto slowly but surely getting pinned down. Unfortunately, under fire from a T-70, so not able to continue to engage with this Brandenburger. But this CK and the Chendor and the Brandenburger all out of line of sight at the moment. If you're wondering what the Chendor are, they are a 13-man fanatical police unit. So pretty cool unit, especially if you are using the disheartened units and the CK. An interesting disheartened unit which has a Molotov. So actually relatively useful in close range and in combination with the Tendor, they don't automatically fall back. So uh, you can definitely get some decent frontline presence from them. Unfortunately, this Brandenburger getting a little bit too close. Double Hoshkiss machine gun going to be engaging us. I am now bringing up a Panzergunfuhrer as well. Really want to utilize the extra veterancy to the max. Uh, without a commander, uh, I only need one leader in order to get the Brandenburger to rank 3 because they come in at base rank 2. So Panzergunfuhrer should get that done for me whilst my Stug 3 here going to be helping the support on the right hand side. My Brandenburger again taking out another Kalarashi Moto that just got a little bit too close. Pianelli getting close to the Brandenburger might have to be worried because they do have HE themselves but in this case Stug's got me covered so so far so good down here got the Brandenburger Aufklader Marder 2 MG42 just in the light cover ready to keep this middle area covered another Marder actually going to be trying to roll up here this is one thing that I did notice. If you bring in anything like on the left side of this tree line further up, it will come in on like this road, for example, or this road, and then try and go up past this crossroad. And this crossroad obviously is extremely deadly because it can be covered by all of these tree lines. So do be careful with that if you are on this map and on this side of the map. It's all right for them because they have one that goes all the way down here or they just bring it in on this road and it comes in over here. So uh, much easier for them to manage. But 60mm mortars are being used and Taki has them pretty close. They're not the longest range mortars. But in this case, allowing me to get direct line of fire with the Panzer IV is not ideal. He should definitely have them closer to the 
tree line here. But this stug so far providing lovely cover. Brandenburg Alpha still able to provide me decent recon as well. Currently just hidden out in the open. And I've also got the Stur 42 in to support me. So this has 2,000 meter range HE capability. Really good at chipping infantry squads from range. Also good at taking out shorter range AT weapons. On the left you can see I've moved up the MG42 on purpose to try and take care of the Pac-38 and after the Pac-38 is taken care of I can also use it to harass the AT-8 that is there. But we're going to be careful with this AT-8 because it will have the penetration to kill the Stug and the Marda. But more CK on the way. My disheartened infantry which I'm going to be able to push across the open to try and put some pressure onto any infantry in this tree line and then we can engage them with the Stur 42, with the Stug, with the Panzer IV potentially. I've also brought up a Vespa. I wouldn't usually use the Vespa. The Vespa is a unit that I almost exclusively use in Spearverband because it comes in phase A with two on a card. Now other divisions do have two on a card in phase A I believe, but in the case of Spearverband it's their best radio artillery option. Whereas most of the time, if you're particularly using like a German division, for example, you'll have like radio mortars in phase A. Whereas in this case, I'm taking radio mortars in phase B, so having the Vespa in, a in phase A makes sense. Unfortunately, you're going to be losing one of my CK before they unload. I would say, oh, it's just a disheartened unit, but these aren't exactly cheap. And um, they are 25 points uh, because of that Molotov tax. I did obviously lose my Panzer IV here, got killed by the Pac-38, so I've got to be a little bit worried about that. Brandenburg are not able to get close because of the Hodgkiss, and most likely that fell back after it fired as well. But the double MG42 here, actually doing okay, pushing forwards, and I'm keeping the Brandenburg Aufklader as close as I can, so that I can maintain recon on all of these support weapons that I am able to fire at. Brandenburg here, you can see, are still going are able to get off another grenade, unfortunately this time around are going to be taking a grenade themselves, but definitely taking the squad with them, so that's alright. Stoke 3 does get loader wounded here as it moves really, really far up. Brandenburger plus the Stur 42, trying to deal with the Kalarashi At the moment just allowing the Brandenburger to be pinned down. Uh, they will sponge a lot of damage this way. They will take a lot of damage over time because of the double MG42, but if I can just allow the Stur 42 to keep firing at Kalashimoto, it's better for me. Uh, so you can see that he had to fall back there eventually. Double Panzer IV coming in to support this. You can see I'm also now trying to deal with the Hodgkiss. Got a fire position order with the Vespa, and I'm making sure to move the Vespa afterwards. This is the great thing about using uh, armored artillery like this, which is self-propelled, is that you can move it after firing. Uh, so it's not as vulnerable to counter-battery, and even if it does get counter-batteried because it has armor, it is more resilient to counter-battery. So uh, two reasons that you probably want to utilize armored artillery where you can. The main problem with armored artillery in Steel Division 2 is that you don't really get much availability of it, so which is why you don't see it too often. Uh, maybe like Hummels are quite common, but other than that, generally not worth it. Another martyr unfortunately going down. Brandenburger did get into a nice position here. Heavy cover to no cover engagement, but that is a lot of MG42 fire coming our way. We also have 60mm mortar fire coming down as well, so that Brandenburger really not lasting long in that position. CK have unloaded, I'm going to be pushing out in the open. Meanwhile, 81mm mortar are going to be going down to my uh, two Stugs here, the Stug and the Stug 42. I found OAC's mortars back here, managed to get line of sight briefly. MG42 has now got up on the hill, we'll cover against the Pioneeri. More CK on the way. They were planned to go up on the hill, but currently just YOLOing across the crossroads. Again, another example of me bringing in units over here, but then travelling down this road on the crossroad there. A bit unfortunate. So I'm just going to make them join this push, basically. And what that's going to do is reveal the position of the support units in this tree line. So the AT-8, the Hodgkiss, the Pioneer. Um, well, the Pioneer is just an infantry squad, but... Yeah, these Hodgkiss and so on, getting rid of them is important. Going to give targets for my Vespa. I brought in the second Vespa now as well. Both of these going to be continuing to engage the 
MGs and stuff that are making it difficult for my infantry to push forwards. Stur 42 meanwhile looking for the kill onto the 81 mm mortar and I'm able to take that out which is going to help uh, my teammate dead inside on the right hand side, lovely name, um, to push forwards over here. Now on our left we do have Sethor. Uh, Sethor is currently using uh, the Tidegungsbereich Toulon. So we'll have decent support weapons and infantry to hold that left side. But meanwhile, a Brandenburger MG42 going to be going down in this tree line as the double Hodgkiss flag 30, 36 pins them down. Now pushing infantry across the open like this, particularly small numbers of disheartened infantry, never really going to get too far until you actually start pinning the units that are attacking them. So I will be trying to do that eventually. You can see the Vespa is currently targeting both the Hotchkiss and the 88. Now I've also got two radio mortars coming up just because my opponent was using a decent amount of mortars already. I really wanted to find ways to counter battery but also provide my own mortar fire onto the enemy infantry. Now my CK did get in here which is good because they can get on top of the Hotchkiss squad and the Hotchkiss has a minimum range of 100 uh, meters because it's a machine gun so I'm able to uh, get the kill there pretty fast but Vunatore de Kare coming through completely neglected the fact that he had those squads so a Panda Strike does land on my Stur 42 and that goes up in flames my poor CK having to go past the burning wreck not really gonna help with their disheartened trait <laughs> now Pioneer Assault coming in there's only so much Molotovs can do against a double flamer squad Pioneer Assault very very nice I did manage to get the Molotov off, but the CK now in a terrible position as they also get fired on by the Pioneeri. Chendor going to get killed off as well, which means no more military police for these disheartened units. No one to shoot them back in the back if they run away. JU-88 going to be going down there. A little bit of a bombing attempt from my teammates. Uh, 81 mil mortars now going to try and deal with these Hotchkiss for me and with those Hotchkiss down the Seeker should have a better time but we are now into phase B and what that means is there's plenty of T-34 85s to go around especially considering our opponent here is playing Corporal 6 Territorial both Taki and OAC have that division and if they have three cards in phase C and one card in phase B. I think they get 52 T-34, 85, 1944s and we managed to kill one so far so there we go. <laughs> I did have to sacrifice Panzer IV for it as well. At this range the Stug 3 and the Panzer IVs actually have a relatively decent penetration against the T-34, 85, 1944. You can see the Stug there reliably getting the penetration but unfortunately the loader wound really unfortunately making me pay the price I should have noticed that sooner really fired the shot backed off immediately rather than letting it fire the shot go for a second shot which I then <laughs> obviously couldn't fire because it was loader wounded Potez coming in I'm going to take a lot of fire from my flag I actually managed to shoot it down with the help of uh, Dead Inside's AA here Panzer Fort does finish off the T-34. It couldn't see me. There was probably no recon in this tree line. So Panzer Fort able to get a clean shot before it fired itself. Another mortar on the way in. Um, well, got three on the field now. Vespa here you can see is being counter -batteried. Yeah, the plan here is to kill the 88. Again, just keep pinning down anything that's attacking my disheartened units. And this is what disheartened units can be really good for. So if you're ever interested in using disheartened units, like the CK is probably not the best example of this because they are 25 points a pop. But if you had like a cheaper unit, like an Urzatz or something that was like 15 points, then rushing them towards enemy positions to be fired upon is actually a decent strategy to find the positions of the enemies and then RT them. So in this case, you can see the damage that we're doing here, taking out the 88 and so on. 
So we'll be continuing to do that with the CK. The CK are relatively, like, good strength squads. So that in themselves is nice. MG42 here helping pin down the Kalarashi, though. Very, very nice indeed. Now we took out the Pianeri Assault in the tree line. We're also going to be taking out the Kalarashi Moto. But Taki has brought up an AT gun, the Rashitsa, which is going to be taking out my Panzer IV. The Rashitsa, a really, really nasty Romanian AT gun. It has 160 millimeters of penetration and 15 round per minute rate of fire, which in combination is really, really tough to deal with, especially when the majority of my tanks are Stugs and Panzer IVs. Now I have some Hegi Vadas coming in. The Hegi Vadas are a really interesting uh, Hungarian unit. They're technically Hungarian mountain infantry. Um, you'd probably wonder why they're not veteran, but it's because the Hungarian mountain units were made to replace the elite units that had already been lost. So they are just regular infantry, more or less, at this point. I haven't really had any specialist training. They're just put into mountain battalions. So, yeah, Hegi Vadas here. Pretty interesting squad, anyway. Come with three submachine guns, nine rifles, and a Madsen. That's when they don't get transport sniped. <laughs> you can see both of these trucks here burning as one of my squads got completely destroyed and one man survived the other one. Oh, nice kill here, though. Oh, no. Attack. Brandenburger getting their double MG on the Reshitsa. That's definitely what we want to see. If I can take out the Reshitsa, it enables my Stug 3s and the Panzer 4s to potentially get closer. But the Stug 42 there as well. So, on this left side, CK. Slowly but surely getting closer. You can see the Reshitsa does get taken out by my Brandenburger. But a new Pioneeria Salt has come in and taken out the Brandenburger on the right hand side. But I did take an AT gun with me, so that was okay. The one that transport sniped my Hegi with that. So it makes the road here a bit safer. Allows me to get up some more reinforcements. And now my Flag Verling having a go at the JU87 on the left hand side. This Flag Verling was actually an MVP throughout this game so <laughs> definitely keep an eye on the kills this thing gets throughout very very strong now Vunatore Dekare also becoming a uh, victim of the Brandenburger the double MG with the two star veterancy very very nasty indeed Vespa now going for some counter battery looking to take out some of the mortars that he was using behind this tree line. And my 81mm mortars are going to be trying to harass the T-34-85. A Pioneer Assault come over, make short work of the Brandenburger. Again, double flamer. Very, very nasty. Pioneer Assault, one of those better double flamer squads, similar to Stumaviki Rocks. And going to fill up now coming in to join the CK just to give them some extra veterancy. And the beauty of Molotovs is they do throw before a flamer can aim. So if you have enough Molotovs, then you can get the better of those decent flamer units. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do. Big artillery does come in here though, takes out my MG42, and now I'm going to have to start dealing with their big artillery. They can get a lot of artillery, particularly uh, with Corporal 6. They also have the 8th Cavalry Apotata, which does have to rely quite a lot on artillery, but is currently up against Sethor on this left-hand side, so probably not going to be seeing much artillery from them, hit us at least. Hello, Ashley. Caught out in the open. Double Brandenburger. Well, one Brandenburger and the Brandenburger MG going to be engaging those. Take out the Kalarashi. You can see the CK do get the Molotov off before the Pioneeria Assault. But don't fully pin the Pioneeria Assault because of the double star, double vet that they have. But I'm able to pin them down quickly afterwards. Three star Brandenburger with a Molotov from the CK. Job done. So this is a nice combination. Having a Molotov unit that can be followed up by a HE... Uh, grenade unit and that's what I'm going to be using to try and sneak through here I've also got the Chendora to make sure that they are not running away basically 
<laughs> and on this left side, Stug trying to take care of the Pioneerly leader, but now being fired on by a Pack 38. So I'm hoping that the Stug can get the better of the Pack 38. The Pack 38 is not going to have like the most reliable penetration at this range. So I am able to commit to that and find the kill. But more Pioneerly assault up against us here. And it is a difficult amount to deal with because if they go one to one with my disheartened infantry that's a problem so I'm looking to get the molotovs off if I can in this case I was stood on flames so I wasn't able to get that one off to get the molotov in onto the leader here killing the leader would have been nice uh, but wasn't quite able to I do have some Hathoror Yaror <laughs> here which uh, not the best close range infantry, also disheartened. We're going to have to back off for now. Unfortunately, Brandenburg are going down, but did manage to trade a T-34 there. Mortar fire coming in nicely onto all of this infantry. Kalashimoto and the Pioneeri. Strauzzi, or sorry, not Strauzzi, Sike, still trying to push across the open on what remains of them. <laughs> it's like they're getting pinned down, they fall back. And then they pluck up the courage to run forwards again. Because they know that the Chendor are coming otherwise. Hathoror Yaror getting caught out out in the open here. Multiple T-34s on the horizon. Not something I'm going to want to deal with. But the CK getting the better of another PNA the assault. And I'm happy with that. Unfortunately the CK dying quickly afterwards. And back here I do have a commander. So you saw earlier that a lot of these CK were actually two vet because I had a leader here, but the leader has been taken out. Nice kill though onto the Pioneeri leader though. It does take away the leadership from the Kalareshi Moto and the Kalareshi though. Now pack 40 sneaking into this tree line is going to allow me to engage the T-34 85s. I've got another pack 40 that's going to be trying to sneak around here. Multiple pack 40s in fact. This is where I up the ante with my close range engagement. Multiple Brandenburger Pioneers. Now Brandenburger Pioneer, probably on the same level as a Pioneer Assault, uh, just with a couple less men. Actually no, they have the same amount of men, sorry. So yeah, double Flamer squads, always very, very nice. And having the Flamers separate is great. Uh, I think there's one squad in the game, I, I'm pretty sure it was the Brandenburg Pioneer, maybe they fixed it, where they had the Flamers together. So the Flamers fired like twice as fast, but not at the same time. Which was not as effective, because having both the Flamers fire separately, but at the same time, gets you that initial suppression that allows you to surrender units faster. So having the Flamers separate is really, really nice. And having four Brandenburger Pioneer here to deal with Morty and the remainder of the Pioneer Assault is perfect. So there go the Morty. We got the Pioneer Assault that's going to get hit by the Molotov, then smacked in the face by four flamethrowers. And yeah, <laughs> we make short work of that squad. I've got off map coming in. The Stier. My off map vehicle. Chilling out here, calling in 149mm barrage on this area. Well, the Stug going to go down though, unfortunately, as artillery smacks that in the face. I was mortaring his tanks, he was mortaring my tanks, and goodbye to that Stug. Now, Kalarashimoto here, going to be revealing themselves against the Seed Gate, going to allow me to not push the Pack 40 into that position. Uh, here, artillery actually landed on some Panzergrens that I'd brought up. Now, because I was having to avoid using this road, and all of my units were automatically coming in on this side, I, I ended up basically calling in my infantry short on these roads. So sometimes I would have like infantry just sat here in transports and stuff, and not really doing anything. And so in this case, I think he saw that, and then smashed it with the... Uh, artillery which caused them all to unload and take a little bit of damage there as you can see. So yeah the Kalarashi Moto I'm doing a runner with the pack 40 going to be trying to cover it with the 81mm mortars. Got the Hataror Yorora coming over and well 
Vespa down as it does get direct hit <laughs> by an enemy artillery piece. You can see this one also got counter battery. That was just me getting lazy, uh, moving them after the strikes. And the one time that I stopped doing it, even though I was doing it from the start of the game, I get punished. So, yeah, not great. Okay, thankfully, they use Panzergrenz 3 Venerate C due to the Panzergrenz Fjorda nearby, which is connected to this commander. I've also brought up the battery Fjorda here, which is going to allow these Brandenburger Pioneer to stay at 3 VAT as well. Egi Vadas come in, they'll pick up the 2 VAT, and we'll have a really, really strong position here. And I know because I played Corporal, I don't have to worry too much about enemy off map, but. I will have to worry about a lot of artillery, so there is definitely potential there. Another one bites the dust for the flag filling. Yep, that's going to go down. Nice kill for the flag filling here. Atoroy Yaror trying their best against the Kalashimoto at close range. At this range, the Kalashimoto are really not as effective because they don't have access to their double MG42. That definitely makes a big difference. You can see I'm actually arting exactly where they are. Because I knew that the Hasaro Yaro would die. And the artillery shell there was actually perfect. Landed just as they died. Ashitsa. Trying to take that out with the mortars. I am successful in doing so. Making sure that those continue to go down is important. If he brings in a card in B and a card in C. He will get 10 of them in total. So we're going to want to keep taking them out the best we can and this is where knowledge of like your opposing deck as well as your own is actually quite important so like obviously you know I'm not just pulling the numbers out my ass um, I'm pretty sure that's the case in terms of the Rashid there and that learning that kind of stuff just going through the decks even if you're not planning to play them is a good idea and a good tip and anyway, these Brandenburger Unfortunately, very pinned in the face of two T-34s, the Moti and the Kalarashimoto. But I spot a damaged T-3485, and a mortar strike's going to take that out, which is very nice indeed. More Brandenburg are arriving. I have a card in phase A, B, and C, which actually affords you quite a lot of them. But this Brandenburg, a bit of a waste, honestly, letting that die. A pack 40 here. Also moving way too close. Lucky to have that survive on one health. If I can get all these Brandenburg into the tree line at the same time, we will have a good chance of pinning down these units. Look at the MG42 suppression there. Beautiful. They also have a bit of like splash suppression, as you might have noticed. So I was shooting at the multi on the left, but the suppression of the MG42 also pinned down the unit on the right. But yeah, Brandenburg against units that don't have veterancy out in the open. An absolutely nasty engagement for our opponents here. And Spiverband Castle, honestly, as a division, is really nice because it has decent medium armor. You know, you've got plenty of Stugs, you've got some Panzer Fours, and then you can, you basically have a front line of Brandenburger and other relatively decent infantry. So I've got Panzergrenz in phase C, we've got uh, the CK Shendor uh, combination, and it seemed to work out really nicely. The only issue that I found with Spiverbank Castle, which you'll see as the game goes on, is it's not the deepest deck in the world. So in prolonged games, particularly against a deck that is very deep, like the Kurpul 6 Territorial, you definitely start to bump into some problems. And we can currently see four T-34, 85, 1944s, make that five. So <laughs> they're counting up, but that's another one down. As the Pack 40 claims another kill. Bomber coming in there, the Polish bomber, on the right-hand side. And OAC having to fall back some of his infantry. But then inside here... Committing the ultimate sin. I will take this opportunity to make a general announcement. Do not place your artillery on roads if you plan to fire it. Because this is what happens. All of my infantry <laughs> get <laughs> unloaded <laughs> automatically by the counter battery that is landing on this Hummel. <laughs> so now they have a very long walk 
My poor Heggy Vadas. <laughs> having to run the whole way up there. Pack 40, one health. Pack 40 finally dies. I think it tried to take a shot at the T-34, took a return shot and died because it was only on one health. <laughs> one health AT guns. Unfortunately not quite the same potency as they used to have in Stur Division Normandy 44. That was always a thing. Unfortunately not so much anymore. Now, a bit of a missed micro for me. You'll see this in a minute. I went for the fire position onto the T-3485 and then obviously I went to select something else and gave a move order. I actually still had the 81mm Morses selected, so they're going to be driving to the front line. Uh, meanwhile, the Hegi Vidas making their attack move forwards, slowly but surely moving up. Triple Stug 4, currently waiting behind this tree line in case he wants to make a push in. I still have two strikes left on this 149mm. It's off map. But that won't stop me from bringing in a second off map. Another Stier 149 coming in. Going to be overtaking these silly trucks. <laughs> the poor button. The button, unfortunately, a very, very slow uh, truck. Not likes at all in the 1v1 community because of that. Morty here. Going to be having a go at the Brandenburger Pioneer. As long as I can keep the Morty moving, they won't throw their HE. If they start aiming and then stop, they will automatically throw the HE. So you have to be really careful in those flamer engagements. But in that case, it pretty much went perfectly. Only took two health damage on one of the Pioneers. Got rid of both of the Morty. So big win there for me. Also, Brandenburger take out the Kalarashi on the left-hand side, which is a, a, another good kill because it takes away the recon from the T-3485. Finally realized that the a to one mil mortars were on a suicide run towards the enemy, so getting them back into safety. And the Hegi Vidas finally finding their way to the front line. Now at the moment, as you can see, we are well ahead in the game. Now, in terms of tickets, we are really far ahead. 12-12 to 12 on the map right now. I'm continuously trying to contest this flag so we can sit on the 1311 and find the victory. So that was the plan moving forwards. Pack 40 finds a nice APCR shot there onto the T3485. And the T3485 wrecks start to build up. They give us lots of them arriving. Now this plan was to basically unload them and push into this tree line. Now if I can get into here, we can control this flag. So that was what I wanted to do next. But the with us going to be going down on the right hand side. They got wiped by OAC's forces, I think, there. Maybe one more mortars firing away. Going to make sure they're moving immediately after their strike. If you want to do this, you just do T for fire position, and then you hold shift and you right click away. Fortunately, my teammate, his Hummel is dead, and does get killed. But hey, at least he's not going to be arting from the road anymore. <laughs> now, it is okay, I would say, to RT from roads that aren't used to reinforcements. So, for example, like here might not be too bad if you were to drive backwards and forwards. But any roads that require you to be on to get to the front line, you don't want to put artillery there. That's why you see my artillery kind of driving around in the open as much as possible. Sometimes I'll be near the road, but I won't stay there for long. The main reason I'll be near the road is so that I'm not at a place I used to be in case the counter battery starts coming in. Now we have seven squads of Hegi Vidas engaging the Kalarashi motor. Unfortunately, the Madsen machine gun is really not that good. So, whilst it may be seven Madsen machine guns, the Kalarashi motor kind of tanking that in the heavy cover for a while. Three T-3485s further to the right here. My off-map is going to clip a 60 mil mortar back here. That is going to allow me to sit on this flag for a bit longer, so happy with that. And we are now making the play to get into this tree line. So, just kind of waiting for that to come to fruition. 
Now, some of these were on move orders because I was trying to get them into heavy cover before engaging. The rest of these on the left side are in fact on attack move orders. The Kalashimoto there and the Pianini at close range don't really stand a chance. The Hegevidas do have their Molotovs of course but it's more just the overwhelming amount of rifles that are firing at them there that is the problem. Again another two Morty coming in but double team them. Job done. This mortar taken out by the Hegevidas. Nice. Now we just got to find a way to deal with all these T-34s and this is where I was starting to bump into problems of availability. I've obviously started bringing in my Stoke 4s. Uh, I've got a pack 40 here. But, you know, there's not too much I can really use. More Stug 3 is going to be coming up. If I overwhelm the T 34s at sort of like a close range, 1,500 meters, somewhere like that, I might be able to get some reliable kills. So that's what I was planning to do. Hey, give it us. Trying their best. Actually, end up bumping into a lot of Pianeri. Um, I think what most likely happened here was. Taki saw that I was coming into this position with all of these Hegevidas and he reacted by bringing in loads of Pianini. <laughs> and he also has plenty of leadership, as you can see. Three star units means that there is definitely a leader nearby. And they're, they're connected to a commander, most likely in this case, because it's unlikely he's going to bring in the Pianini and Kalalashimoto at 2 VAP, so. That much we know. Now I've kind of run out of Molotovs, it's not ideal. And we're also going to be seeing the Portes of OAC come in with these bombs, the two 200 kilogram bombs. It's going to pin down all of those units. So we're going to have to do a runner. Portes going down. But nice juicy off map is firing away here, as you can see. Going to be hitting a lot of these units. Pack 40 has managed to sneak up into the building here. We are going to take out one of the T-34-85 1944s as all of that artillery comes down. Very cinematic shot there. Fortunately this Hegevidas <laughs> not in the best position as it did engage the Kalarashimoto and then get spotted. Should have had it on reserve fire really. Yeah this area definitely an issue for our opponents because they're bringing in loads of reinforcements and now they're getting stuck on this crossroads that we're putting pressure on which is obviously good for us my Stug's arriving this off map going to be taking an absolutely wild ride across the crossroads this is like balls of steel territory right here this is a three strike off map that hasn't fired yet and I accidentally sent it in this direction. <laughs> and I realized at this point, as you can see, I changed the order. <laughs> yeah, lucky to get away with that. If there was one AT gun here or an AT gun here, <laughs> that was dead a long time ago. Thankfully, I'm not being too pressured from this side. That was okay. Just two Marders actually covering the open flag. The rest of my resources are being focused on capturing this flag. I'm trying to put pressure on this flag. And also, of course, this flag right here. Got some off-map now coming down onto this area. Going to be trying to pin the Pianeri, Kalarashi, allow the Hegi Vidas and the follow-up Panzergrants to move in there. Most of the T-34s that were on this side of the hedgerow are now dead. But I can't easily move on towards uh, the Corporal Six Territorial because they do get Black 88s. 88s of course being on the allied side <laughs> it's not ideal and it's definitely going to make things difficult for my Stug I think when I took this engagement I didn't really realise initially that it was in fact an 88 and not one of the crappy 85 mils that the Soviets get so I take a penetration to the face with that Stug but we're able to kill one of the T-3485s and my off map is now coming down again on that area and with the 88 pinned down, the Stug can continue its engagement. With the artillery falling on the left, the Panzerguns are trying to clean things up here as well. But my Hegevidas that were there all died beforehand, unfortunately. So now I'm trying to use some of my Brandenburger Pioneer to push through this tree line as well. Uh, get my Battery Führer 
across to help give veterancy to these infantry squads. My Panzer Grenade are going to find these Throki Komrati, which is nice. And the off map, I think, did finish off the 88 there, so now my Stug's just free to shoot the, all of the Kalarashi Moto out in the open. It's not like they're going to be in short supply of the Kalarashi Moto. You can get 32 on a card in Phase C without veterancy. Unfortunately for me, their artillery is coming in hot onto my Panzergrens. That is going to pin them down in the open, which is going to be very difficult. Backfilling though, claiming another kill onto the JU-88. Second one there, I don't think I got that kill. Definitely got one of them. Yeah, Stug's actually doing pretty well here. But look at this. So many T-34s. I've got a Stug 4 kind of waiting in cover. And we got four Stug 3s coming up the road. My push on the left's kind of failed completely. I should have definitely fall, fallen these back as soon as they got pinned. But I think I was also kind of focusing quite heavily on this right-hand side. Pack 40 currently trying to engage these T-34-85s and doing pretty well. And just to get the gun jam on the second one, so it takes it out of action, if anything, for the time being. It does finish it off, so two T-34 kills there. Now, going to be going for the T-34 engagements here, but I don't have any eyes. Big mistake on my part. No recon, but neither does he, <laughs> because that T-34-85 was blind as a bat. And the T-34-85 taking a spalling crit, that's two more down. That's four T-34-85s. Unfortunately, I walk straight into his T-34-85s now. I take one hit. Engagements of the sentry. <laughs> so many tanks firing at each other. This really doesn't happen all that often in, in uh, Steel Division 2. Technically... It is really good value if I trade a Stug for a T-3485-1944 because Stug 3s cost 30 points left, less. But the issue that I have is availability. He has way more availability than I do and I definitely cannot allow him to shoot at me from this range. At range, even at the max range of the Stug 3, there's no way... I have nowhere near the chance of penetrating them as they have penetrating me. At closer ranges, it's totally fine. But like here you can see the Stug 4 just absolutely getting blasted from range. No chance. So I've got to be really careful when I take these engagements. It was fine when they were here because they're nice and close. But back here when they can utilize their max range, which is bigger than the Stug 3 by the way, you got a problem. you got a big problem. So most of my off maps down now. Vespa finally going to get off maps and again you can see I'm using this road to travel back and forth on when I'm using artillery and that means that it doesn't affect my reinforcements but I still got the mortars so that's okay like radio mortars are still very effective in this situation we're currently sitting on a 1410 with five minutes till victory but Sethor doing a good job of capping this flag all the way up there we're still holding on to this flag that starts on their side of the map. So that's the two flags that we have in advantage right now. Brandenburger Pioneer are going to be finding another enemy leader unit here, the LTBM. So we're going to be trying to take them out. You can see I'm setting up an attack order just to try and clean out as much stuff as I can here. But a full health multi squad is not what I want to see. Kalarashi Moto, Kalarashi coming out of the woodwork. Completely surrounding that one squad. <laughs> and my battery field are <laughs> going to have to do a runner. Now at this point, I do have more Brandenburg and Hege Vedas. But I don't have any more Brandenburg or Pioneer. So I've got to be a little bit careful. Or Pioneer or Panzergren is going to be on the way. My Brandenburg are here now only down to two men. So that's... I'm bringing in this force just to maybe go for another push here. Trying to keep my opponent on their toes by putting some pressure here, putting some pressure here, and then kind of switching that backwards and forwards. Ideally, a 
probably wouldn't have wanted to do this. I probably should have continued to commit on this side. Mainly because uh, this area had been previously reinforced quite significantly by infantry. And by playing into that, it's not a good idea. But uh, at the moment, we just got a bunch of people having a nice chat over here. You know what? I forgot about it. <laughs> took three. Going to be able to hit the Morty. And, uh, yep. Do plenty of damage. But we are under artillery fire again. Like, whilst it's nice to hide in the back of the building here, you can see that this Stug is just lining up to suffer the same fate as the one next to it. And there it goes. So, Panzergrenz spreading out. Eggy Vidas and the Brandenburg are still having a nice party over here. These Brandenburg are pioneer with the help of the Vonatore de Munter. Nice triple surrender onto that close range infantry. Very good indeed. And the funny thing about this game is because of the sheer amount of units that Corporal Six Territorial can bring in, it really felt like any time, like I had to get like two to one and three to one engagements with my infantry every time, else it was like impossible for me to push. So anytime like this Morty are dying, and like one Brandenburg are taking out like multiple Morty, or in this case the, the Panzergrenz getting the better of the Morty out in the open, that's great. Uh, unfortunately, the Pack Forty though gets killed off. Uh, and once again, the Brandenburg are pioneer able to take care of a Morty squad. We are now. 13 to 11, and the party has been broken up on this side <laughs> as artillery comes in and reminds me that there are men over here. Well, not, maybe not as many as there were before. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, moving on. <laughs> on the left hand side, Forrest has started to put the pressure on Sethor, and I am forced to send a few units to try and relieve him because I believe Sethor is out of infantry at this point. We are of course almost 50 minutes into the game and it can be quite easy to get through a lot of infantry in 50 minutes particularly when that's what your, de your deck is prim primarily comprised of like the Tidegungsbereichtalon is. But now we see the IL-4s coming in from OAC, they're going to be dropping their bombs, big old payloads onto the Brandenburger Pioneer, onto the Bari Führer. Brandenburger Pioneer actually surviving that strike somehow. Now Panzergrenz that were trying to contest this flag under fire from the T-34-85, Stur-42 trying to kill the Morty in response. That's real tough. Schendor with the Hatteroy Jaror and the Brandenburger and Panzergrenz. Unfortunately, losing this engagement, the artillery coming in here, pinning down my units, really not great. But the T-3485 is now shooting at my Stuart 42. I'm trying to get the Stug 3 around the edge of this building in the meantime, but it wasn't quite cooperating with my orders. It was annoying because the double Stug that had died on the right-hand side here was actually blocking the Stug from getting around on the right side, which causes me to lose the Stur. I mean, I could have probably retreated the Stur, but... Um, I was obviously busy microing the Stug 3 to get around the left side of the building in the meantime. And that's going to be able to kill the T-3485. It does trade its life because of the spalling crit. So, I mean, I gave him a spalling crit earlier, so I guess he deserves one back. Uh, but yeah, Stug 3 down. Now, the infantry that was planned to attack here earlier is finally attacking. The Hege Vadas and the Brandenburger moving across the open. The Brandenburger do have the Veteran C and the MG42s, so moving them across the open isn't too bad. The Hege Vidas, they probably want to move into the into the heavy cover here and then sweep round with the Brandenburg Aufklader. Either way, I am able to capture that flag. And uh, I brought in a couple of Panzergrenz here, but they should probably be unloaded. You also might have seen me buy all of these Fokker Wolves on the left side, but I don't really have a good place to use them at the moment. Like on the right, we can see the AA is right there. Um, and on the left, I had no idea what the AA was like. So not able to really commit that just yet. Anyway, uh, Brandenburger Aufklader unfortunately taken out. Hegevedas struggling to deal with the Morty. 
I'm going to be engaging the Hotchkiss Dubla with the double MG42. Looking to take that out. If I can strip down some of the AA, then it will open up the use of those Fokker Wolves. So that was half the plan. You can see my last off map now being used. We'll be hitting a lot of these reinforcements, the, the Granicelli Calare, forced out of their transports, forced to retreat. Of course, I am currently being smashed to pieces by artillery, and that is going to cause a surrender. Hatoror Yaror and the Barrifura both going to go and get surrendered. Finally kill the Hodgkiss Dubler, but the Brandenburger get taken out. And the artillery back here was well, really well used at this point. They had a lot of it, and they were basically using pretty much a creeping barrage through this tree line to sweep me out of there. Now, without any position in this tree line, it's very difficult for me to hold here as well. So, things have become a lot more difficult. Thankfully, I still have units on this side. You can see I'm now bringing in the Fokkerwolves to help with this engagement. One of my pioneers, or not pioneers, Panzergrenz, got caught out on the road and got absolutely demolished by the sheer number of infantry here. But I'm able to get some really nice bombing strikes, chip away quite a few of the units that Forrest had. Now 88's coming in. If there's one thing that Sethor should have that's good, it's AA. As he is playing Verteidigungs, but I Talon. So JU88 is going to get taken out. I'm going to claim another kill <laughs> with the flag filling there. Artillery hitting the Brandenburger and the Hegiva Das. This is relatively unsupported. I can't do much against the artillery. I didn't have, I believe, any super long range artillery of my own left. So at this point, just purely reliant on the mortars. And you can see the total number of units that I have left on the map is considerably less <laughs> than maybe like 10 20 minutes ago <laughs> like a lot of the Stugs have been killed like yeah, lots lots of my armor basically is gone uh, that was here before I've been pushed out of key positions now this flag in the tree line here all of the units that were attacking have died like even the units that I sent over here one of them's dead already actually I think both of the Panzer Grenz oh no there it is and died but uh yeah, Stugs now coming in to help support as well. Unfortunately, this one kind of falling prey to the artillery that's hitting, or was supposed to be hitting, the 105. So, yeah, unfortunately our team is in trouble. But there's seven minutes left on the clock, and we're still well ahead in tickets. So the key here is to basically not let them get ahead in tickets. If they are ahead in flags, but we are ahead in tickets, the game is a draw. So that is our best bet, because it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to take back enough flags to get a victory, which would require us to be in, at least ahead in flags at the end of the game. Now, Morty here getting the better of my Brandenburger Pioneer. Unfortunately, as soon as those are out of heavy cover, the Brandenburger Pioneer are pretty dead. They can kind of smoke for themselves, but since they're falling back, the machine guns can do some decent damage. Mumblewag are going to have me covered temporarily. And the Panzer Grenz on this side absolutely deleting the Morty there with the help of the Panzer IV. But now T-34-85 is advancing very aggressively. Stug 3 able to get a shot off, but unfortunately bounces. Very unfortunate bounce there for me. Another Stug coming up. Pack 40 in a good position, though. Unless it's uh, finishing off the Brandenburger Pioneer with its HE. The Mahegi Vidas trying to move forwards, but having a real hard time here. Like, like <laughs> this is just absolutely crazy. <laughs> Like just it's just devastation everywhere right now. This is what happens when you get this late into a game. Bradley Fuda having a hard time. We got IL2M coming in, Portez coming in with the bombs. 
Let's take out the Battlefield as they get surrendered. BF-109 coming in for the interception. But I don't want to get too close to enemy AA. You can see the amount of <laughs> 88 shots flying our way. Plans for going down there as well. IL-4 getting slammed by the flag filling. And would you look at that? It's another flag filling kill. Oh, yeah. Okay, so at this point... Aside from Stu, because the only thing I've got to kill T-34s is Panzer Shreks. And since he's getting very aggressive with the T-34s, I was hoping that the Panzer Shreks could get some work done. Um, since they obviously need to be close to the enemy tanks to kill them. I've uh, got more Hege Vidas, got a Stu 4. And, yeah, just more more infantry flooding in. And the issue with Hege Vidas is, whilst they are good to supplement your other higher tier infantry, like Brandenburger, on their own they're a little bit lackluster especially at range because they're reliant on rifles and machine guns unfortunately that Panzerstreck <laughs> gets deleted absolutely evaporated by that artillery and well now it's just a matter of numbers that inside Panzer IVs and Meistug IV up against all these T-34s but I also have my Fokker Wolves ready. So bringing in five Fokker Wolves. Dead inside's going in for the strafe. We notice that the AA is not really able to stop me from getting these bombs off at least. So they're going to be taking out the Vernatore de Care. Take out the Granicea de Calare. Get a bomb close to the T-3485 there as well. At the same time. There was potential really for me to focus the T-34s with those bombing strikes. But... I thought to myself at this point that the enemy infantry would be more the problem. And without the infantry, the T-3485s can't advance so aggressively. So I decided to go and chip down as much of the infantry as I could with that bombing strike. On the left side here, losing some more units, getting transport sniped at this point by the T-34 is not good. Now down to 13-11, lost two Hegevedas on that left side. Really, really bad news. This was mainly because I was focusing so much zoomed in over here. Just check this out. Everything in ruins in both directions. At least we are slowly but surely chipping down the T-3485s. But, yeah. words don't really do justice to the destruction in this area as another one of my Stugs is going to go down Panzer IV kills a T-34 just this like knife fighting T-34 Stug Panzer IV engagements like <laughs> as I mentioned before this really isn't something you see all that often unfortunate bounce but the second one does the job but Natale De Care in a good position not close enough though yeah really really tough engagement Brandenburger trying to do their best here you see the T-34s again pushing up very aggressively don't have a panzer strike there the T-34s did actually take out a couple of my mortars which were out of position I'm just trying to hold on 1 minute 20 left on the clock Again, we're still ahead in tickets. But we're just trying to hold on to the flags as well. Panzerstreck, unfortunately, falling prey to stray artillery again. And bringing up an SDK of Z71 here. <laughs> but here come the Fokker Wolves. Another bombing strike, this time definitely focusing on the tanks. As I didn't really have anything else to deal with them. I've also got BF-109 G6U4s looking for strafing runs. Now, BF-109 G6U4s are actually pretty good at strafing because they have a 30 mil in the nose. The Rashid side there are going to be making short work of the SDK FZ-71. Panstrak did manage to unload. Going to unload the Brandenburger early just in case. Meanwhile, Taki going to be sending more T-34s. Across the open this time against the Marder 2s. Is going to be backing up. 
temporarily. But I'm able to take out one of them. 15 to 9 for our enemies, and that's going to be time. 60 minutes on the clock. Just like that. What a game. What a game that was. So, yeah, in the end, a draw because we were ahead in tickets, but they were ahead in flags. That's how it works. Obviously, if that game were to go on another 10, 20 minutes, they would have won just because the pure availability in the Corporal 6 Territorial is crazy high. But, uh, yeah, we held on, I would say. And I'll take a draw in that situation. 7,480 kills to 6,510 losses, getting the most kills on my team. Uh, but yeah, that was real, real tough. Obviously, Turkey, Forest, putting up a good fight. Every single one of them getting a positive KD, but not quite able to get across the finish line. We held them there. We held them there. <laughs> Fantastic game, nonetheless. Uh, what can I say other than that pretty much showed off everything that the Spiava band has to offer, or at least in my deck, and the flag filling of dreams, getting so many kills. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Brandenburger Pioneer also doing incredibly well. Just perfectly used against the Morty. The problem here for OAC is that he didn't use Veterancy on top of the Morty when he was taking the engagements against the Brandenburger Pioneer. So I had a three-star Brandenburger Pioneer, like insta-pinning his unvet Morty. That was basically what was happening, which is why he loses them so fast, because they're not getting off their HE at all. Uh, whereas if he had a bit of veterancy on them, then they don't take as much suppression from the flamethrower, and then they get their HE off, and then you trade better. Uh, but yeah, in this case, the Morty getting absolutely wrecked by those. Off map did okay in a couple of places. This one maybe not so much. It definitely would have been beneficial for me to maybe barrage the crossroads rather than use fire for effect. But yeah, trading Stugs for E34s is fine. We had to bomb a couple at the end. Marder 2 was trying to hold his ground. Good old Eberhard. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it. I'll leave it there. I mean, it's been a crazy long video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Okay,